All right, it just started snowing. You can see. So I think it's time to go pick up another project snowmobile. You guys seem to like the last video, so we're gonna go hit the road, load up the trailer, and uh, see if we can go pick one up. This one's been sitting for 30 years in the shed. <laughs> you guys will see it when I get there. Hopefully we can film. All right, we're about 23 minutes away. It was a longer drive than I expected. It was like an hour 30. But we've got the trailer on the back there. We brought the big trailer. These snowmobiles are bigger than expected. They're, they're longer than eight feet, so I can't fit them on my other trailer. We're gonna ask and see if we can film while we're there so we can get the backstory on this thing. But I guess it's been sitting for like 30 years, so it should be an interesting one. Hopefully it's not too rough. It looks pretty clean from the pictures, but it's hard to tell in pictures, so. All right, let's see if we can get lucky on this one like we did the last one. That would be awesome. But yeah, so what can you tell me about it? Uh, I got it from my uh, um, stepfather okay. a lot of years ago. And uh, you said, actually, did you say 30 years ago? Yeah. In the end? <laughs> and then wow. the wife and I, the last time we drove it, this uh, one of the skis came off. Oh. And uh, so, I had, they had backup skis, so I put the skis on it, but the only thing okay. that I noticed there is it's got this hole in the corner. Oh, yeah, that okay. Maybe a little piece of metal get welded in there. Yeah, on the bottom of it, maybe. But it always ran like a champ. Really? And it was gonna be a project, but then we upgraded to other sleds, so I never, okay. I just have so many projects, I just don't need another one. Kind of a cool looking older oh, machine. Oh yeah, it is, it really is, yeah. yeah. But it, it ran 25 years ago. I parked okay. it back in the lean-to. It's never been outside in the weather. Okay. So I mean, it's... So what do you think it needs to get running uh, again? To get running? Gas. Uh, maybe a new gas cap. Okay. Um, Maybe some lines, and that'd be about it, I okay. think. My wrists are all shot, so I don't can't pull shit over. Oh, me. really? It's a bummer. I'm sure if you, I don't know if your intention is to just fix it and sell it, but I think you'll do really good on it. Yeah, I, I uh, fix them up on YouTube, so I fix them and then show the process of fixing them up on YouTube. Yeah. And I either keep them or um, or sell them at the end, depending yeah. on how much I like it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so that's kind of the process I, I go through. Yep, yep. Yeah, it looks like it's all there. That's nice. Well, yeah, like I said, it, it always just ran. We put it away, and just, uh, we just upgraded and never did nothing else. Okay. You have any other offers on it? Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah. But it seemed like something always came up. And yeah. Is that a different carburetor in there? Yeah. Okay. Is the one on it fine? Yep. yep. For it? Okay. Huh. Cool. Well, I'll take her. Looks like it's pretty good. I saw one kind of like, but in really, really bad shape online, and they were asking 100 bucks just to get rid of it for parts. Okay. And I, I do have the title and stuff for it. Okay, awesome. It so looks like there's only 3,500 miles on it. <laughs> That's not bad. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Do you remember if the gauges worked? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they did. Okay, cool. Awesome. So 150 then? Yep, yep. All right, cool. All right, the seller was really cool and uh, helped me load it on the trailer. He was a really nice guy. But uh, I ended up getting it for 150 bucks. It was up for 250. So he knocked off 100 bucks. He did say there were other people interested in it, so I didn't want to lowball him too much. Uh, I was gonna offer 100, but I figured you know, I'll pay the 150. Not a big deal. It's a pretty cool looking machine back there. We'll check it out when we get back home. But he said it shouldn't take much to run, which, who knows, it's been sitting for 30 years. Um, I'm sure the mice have gotten to it. So we'll see when we start digging into it, but it looks pretty cool. I like the pink and the black. That looks pretty awesome, actually. It looks really retro. And it's got the cheetah print seat, which is pretty cool. But yeah, cool looking sled. I can't wait to uh, hear it start up for the first time. We'll get home and we'll try to get this thing to start up. 
should be fun. All right, it's the next morning. There the beauty is right there. Let's go check her out. Looks pretty cool. Oh yeah. That's gonna be fun. Panther 340. I believe it's in 1977. Came with a title. Check out the title here. Let's see. Articat, 1977. Last registered in 94. <laughs> that's crazy. But yeah, that's pretty cool. So 1977. Articat. Cheetah seat on it. Gas tank cap is a little rough. Doesn't really twist on. I'm hoping the gas tank isn't leaking too. It looks like it might be right down here. But yeah, it's got the key in it yet. It's got an old carb on it, so. We'll get this off the trailer and see if we can start working on it. See if we can fire it up today. off the trailer. It's not too heavy. The seat's really nice besides that one rip right there. Otherwise it'd be mint. Pretty cool looking sled isn't it? The pink is cool with the black and the cheetah. Definitely unique looking. Here's the tag down here. <laughs> oh, you can see the manufacturing date is 71. Jeez. That's an old one. That is an old one. Yeah, everything looks like it's in good shape. Headlights still intact. The gas tank is a bit rusty in there. Can't tell if there's any gas in there or not. 3,508 miles. We'll try to clean up these gauges, but he said those did work at one point, so we will see. Let's get her in the garage and start working on it. We got the beast in the garage here. The first thing we're gonna do is just check the gas tank. See how rusty that is. I hope there's no holes in the gas tank. I'm kind of feeling like there might be. Oh, she's really rusty. Oh, oh man. I don't know if that's... Wow, that's really bad. Look at the chunks in there. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. It's kind of hard to focus. Yeah, those are all chunks. So, gas tank is not looking too good. And then just inspect it for holes here. Oh man, that's really bad. <laughs> I can see the line is all rusted too. You can see it goes back down there. Completely covered in rust. So I don't know if this thing is going to be sucking any gas through that line. But um, yeah, let's uh, everything's loose on the levers, surprisingly. Let's see what we've got underneath the hood here. 
So Articat dual cylinder. Let's see if we have any leaking or anything. That's kind of cool. There's a belt going to the the fan right here because it's air cooled. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. All the wiring looks pretty intact here. Not seeing anything pulled out yet. Does the key work? He does spin in there, so that's good. We've got the stop button right here. We've got a dimmer right there, brake right there. Looks like the brake is working. That's off right there. We've got a little compartment right here. It looks like this was busted at one point. You can see the plastic's all broken up. But the, the cover plate's fine. Here is the old carburetor. <laughs> That's pretty cool too. It's the same one. It looks like the exact same one. Trying to see if it's missing anything. Doesn't look like it. What is this thing up here? It looks like it's missing that. And then the throttle is right there. Oh okay. god. So I'm not really sure what that piece is for. Hmm. Looks like a secondary throttle position or something. It does have the little air filter. I guess it's just a cage really on there. Yeah. Who knows if this thing's gonna have a spark. The belt doesn't look too bad. We do get it running. I'm hoping it's gonna move. Yeah, belt doesn't look ripped or anything. Looks pretty decent. Exhaust doesn't have any holes in it. That I can see. Doesn't look like the engine was leaking anything too bad. The steering still works. Yep. Headlights connected, so that might even turn on. <laughs> it's crazy, this thing was sitting for 30 years. Untouched for 30 years, he said. I'm not gonna pull it over until we get those spark plugs out of there. I don't wanna break a ring. But yeah, just checking everything over. So I'm guessing this is not oil injected. So I'm guessing there's not a separate spot for an oil canister. I'm trying to see if there's anything. It doesn't look like it. Yeah, look at that. There is a fuel filter attached directly to the carburetor. That's super weird. Look at that, right in the bottom of the carburetor, there's a fuel filter. So, that's gonna be sucking up a lot of rust. And then here's another line going to it. I don't know what that would be for. But here, I believe this is the vacuum line going into the engine, then going into the carb right there. I'm guessing it's gotta be. Pretty clean looking machine. There's a registration June 1987. That's what they used to look like in 1987. <laughs> pretty cool. Track. Let's see what that looks like down here. It does have like the metal track on it. Doesn't look like any rips in the track though. Doesn't appear to be. Looks like the track was sitting on the ground though, so it's probably not great. Everything else looks pretty good. <laughs> Not seeing anything that could be detrimental. You can see how it moves down there. That spins the track. Gotta make sure those are loose. You can see that one too.
Take a look from the other side. Track doesn't look bad. The underside doesn't look bad. No holes. So I think we're gonna be in business there. But all right, let's get these Spark plugs out here. We gotta test for spark. We've gotta get oiled on the cylinders. And I'm guessing it, it's gonna need a carb clean too. Alright. Get the right side plug out first here. Oh, it's kind of already out. Uh-oh. I haven't tried to pull this thing over yet, so. Maybe he already lubed it up for me. Plugs look brand new. Look at that, brand new plugs in there. Champion plugs and to see That's interesting. Let's see what this cap looks like All right Get the left side plug out of here That's a champion plug as well That one was loose That one's brand new too. Look at that. Never ran before. Same plug. So I wonder if he put it away and he just winterized it and put new new plugs in. Not sure. But let's get some oil down there before we pull it over for the first time. Just using some two-stroke oil here. I, I really hope it pulls over. Probably should have done that when I was there, but I didn't want to score the cylinders or if a ring was stuck, I didn't want to break the ring. Let's give us a chance here. Just gonna put a bunch of oil down there. Kind of let that work around in there. All right, we're gonna pull this over now and just kind of see what happens here. Hopefully it doesn't sound crunchy. Yeah, it doesn't pull over. <laughs> That's, I think it's locked up. Great. <sighs> well, he said it was free. I guess it's not. Probably should have done, probably should have pulled it over before. Well, that sucks. That really sucks. Let's see here. Get a little gas down there. Try to free these up. I think the rings are just stuck, but still. Penetrating oil next. I was not expecting it to be locked up like this.
little penetrating oil down there. It's pretty rock solid on there. on the other side here right there grab that and uh, it broke free so it sounded a little bit crunchy in there like really crunchy so there's definitely rust on the rings I'm guessing those rings are stuck to the piston for sure actually We're just gonna really lube this up in there fast enough. this for a little bit. I'll come back once it's freed up a little bit more. All right, so it, it turns over pretty good now. Let's see. It's pretty smooth now. It's not too bad. This belt in here though is locked up. Or I don't think the belt is, but the, the fan in there. If you look, the fan is deep in here, like right here. That's locked up. Solid, so we'll have to take that apart. And that's what cools off the engine. We're just gonna spray some penetrating oil in there. Let it sit there for a bit. See if that can free up. Yeah, this is way worse than I expected. <laughs> Seems like that guy was actually kind of working on it and uh, couldn't get it to go. So, that's unfortunate. Um, let's quick check for spark here. I'll check on that one right there. I don't think it's anything. Zero spark. 
get zero spark out of both of these. Let's see if you guys can see. I'll zoom in there. Yeah. No spark whatsoever. The guy said it had spark. I guess it doesn't. <laughs> Alright, um, guess we'll check the easy stuff first. The plugs look new. So I'm assuming those aren't it. Aren't the problem. We'll check the boot. Oh, that's... That wasn't even attached to it. Hmm. So the boot wasn't even attached. They're all rusty ground the wire to the engine. We'll clip off a little bit of this. See if we can expose it. And then we'll turn it over like that, if I can, with one hand here. Doesn't look like anything's happening. Should see a nice blue spark. Yeah, that's not working. See if I can get this back in. Looks like that's good now. This is going into the wire. Looks like the the spring that holds it in isn't really touching the, the cap. It doesn't feel like. Let's see. We're not getting anything. That cap feels on there. So it's definitely, it's not the spark plugs or the boots, I don't think. Hmm. I guess what we're gonna do is the same thing with the last one. We started with the ignition. So this one's actually got off, on, and start. Almost feels like there should be electric start on here. Listen to that. It's like spring loaded. And usually when you have electric start, it's like that. And then you've got the on-off switch, which is broken up here. So that could be a potential problem as well. Stop looks like you push down for stop. Not sure. We'll have to figure that out. But the wires are all in here for it. So it shouldn't be too bad. We can go in here, disconnect some stuff, and see if we can get something to happen. All right, so it looks like the seat comes off. I wonder if there's a battery underneath there it needs to have. There's something going to here. I saw some wires going to here. So, we've got positive wires, so let's just sink them off too. Is there a battery behind here? That'd be something. So there's wires going to it. Huh. There's a zipper back here. I think that's just to repack it probably. Yeah, there's this foam back there. All right. So where do the wires go to? Is that just for the lights? Well, at least we can get to the hoses easily. That's kind of nice. So those wires are just for lights. Yeah, it doesn't look like she's got electric start, does it? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe that ignition's just corroded. I'll tear into that next. All right, so looking up in here, I disconnected the ignition right up here. I guess I will. All right, so I disconnected the ignition. You can see there's five prongs. And um, so basically those five prongs 
we need to test out with wires. So we're gonna connect alligator clips on those and then we're gonna, we're gonna wait for a beep and just see if they're connecting the continuity between the two. And that'll kinda tell us if the switch is working or not. So let's do that. We've got our alligator clips here. So I know black and black has to connect, so we're gonna look at the harness here. Black and black is either on and off, so black and black is the top one and the bottom one. And the other ones are for the lights and stuff, so I don't really care about those too much. connect these to our voltmeter here. Just want to make sure this is going off. That way we can use the key. And it will tell us if the kill switch needs to be disconnected or connected. So we're on the beeper continuity test. So with the key off it should beep. Yep. And you can see Beep in with the key off, doing the start button, nothing on the start, off is beeping. So that tells us that when it's off, the two wires are connected. So we want the black wires to be disconnected so that we get spark. Um, so we can bypass the kill switch by disconnecting the wires, which they already are. This one pulled out. So. We can just bypass that pretty easily because it's already bypassed. <laughs> if it was connected, we'd have to check the button, but it's already bypassed. And then um, we know that the switch is working so we can reconnect it and try again here. Now that we know that we have to disconnect the black wires, we can check for spark again, see if we're getting anything. Let's see what we get here. All right, it's on, everything's connected back up. We've got the wires for the black wires disconnected this time. Let's see if we get anything. Doesn't look like we're getting anything. Let's see if I turn the key over to start. Nothing. Nothing at all. It's not good. So now what we can do is go down to the stator area and um, I believe this has points. So we can take this plug out right here and test these connections. Make sure we're getting voltage coming out of there. So you can see, this one has five as well. Just like the key switch, five prongs. So what we can do is see what prongs are black. So it looks like the bottom prong is black right there. Alligator clip on there. Then we can ground this to the engine. Let's see if we're getting any spark here. We should be getting a spark coming out of that black wire. So we should see a spark coming out of there. Alright, let's see what happens here. Kind of like on and off spark. Not getting anything more. We got the one time. No, it's not sparking. Let's see, maybe it can't be touching. We gotta just get close. Oh, 
Oh, look at the spark plug sparking now. <laughs> was. <laughs> so something's going on. We're getting good power out of there. Let's check the other black one. You could see it was sparking the spark plug. So I think our points are fine. Let's see, the other black plug is right there. So the first one coming out of here. All right, let's see if we're getting anything now. So that's sending voltage to the plug and it's actually sparking the plug, which is kind of cool. black on there. That might just be a ground. Maybe that's not producing anything. Huh. So that one's not doing anything. I think what we're gonna do is tear down the points system. We're not getting a consistent reading out of here. It sometimes sparks, sometimes doesn't. And I noticed that it's actually a red and yellow wire going directly into the coils. We're not getting any readings from those. So I think that's what triggers it. Um, unless the coils are bad. But I kinda highly doubt that. So yeah, let's tear down the points. Doesn't hurt to check them. Um, we'll just have to see if we can get the flywheel off once we're in there. It's probably going to be pretty rusty. But let's start. Let's start tearing that down. stuff in there. It's a little mousey mouse I think got in here at one point. You can see. Oh yeah, that's all. That's not good. <laughs> Zoom in there. So maybe a mouse got a wire or something in there. take off this cover too and just see if we can move that that pulley up there but instead we get to tear the whole thing apart that's fine too it's it's fun to learn new stuff I've never torn one of these down before so we are learning stuff together I guess we'll see if we can get a wrench on there. Turn that. First we'll coat her with some penetrating oil. At this point, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> it's probably not great for the belt, but we're not really caring about that right now. It was backed off already. So somebody was in here before. Trying to get this thing free. But it backed off like that, so. Somebody tried to work on this thing. Hmm. 
<laughs> it's all rusted in there pretty badly. I'm guessing I can't get that off of there. Maybe a couple love taps with the hammer. Sometimes there's just rust holding it on. Enough to, there we go. It's coming. A little penetrating oil in there. Felt like it was coming. At least it's moving. There's a bunch of washers in there. That goes like that. Yeah, she's a tad rusty. Look at that belt. Completely stuck to it. Get that belt out of there. This one come off. Looks like there's a key in there to hold that in place. You see all the gunk in there. So that's the fan in there. I'm guessing that bearing is shot in there. Hmm. So I'm guessing this bearing right here is locked up. And that's why it's not spinning. Again, I can try a couple love taps with it. See if we can get it to budge. Oh, it's budging. Looks like there's a mouse nest underneath there, actually. All right, it's free. Let's see, it looks like there's a big mouse nest in there. Maybe that's what was keeping it from. Ha ha. Look in there. A little mouse nest going on. Ooh, there's a big acorn. <laughs> you guys see that big acorn? Is it a squirrel or a mouse? Holy cow, a bunch of crap in there. Surprised Vinny's not over here freaking out. He loves mice. Oh, that's why it was locked up. Look at all that. Oh, look at all that coming out. Oh man, there's another big nut. <sighs> we gotta have to get a vacuum. It just keeps on coming. It's a good place for them. Out of the weather. But yeah, that's that's not good. Big chunks in there coming out. That thing spins great. This stuff back here goes into the whole cover. Oh. There's like a whole mouse home back there. How did we get that out of there? I 
All right, we'll keep on digging, but so far, look at all this stuff that came out. Jeez, that's disgusting. All right, that's just spinning pretty good in there. Ouch. So now we can work on the flywheel. All right, we've got to uh, get those 10 millimeter bolts off there. Big nut right here we gotta take off. All right, so this little pulley plate came off. This was the back, that's the front. Looks like this is a 24 millimeter nut on there. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it in there. That's the only problem. Let's see. Might need my Extension. Let's see if it'll fit. There we go. Cut that off of there. We were hitting the frame pretty good there. Oh, you can even see the points through there. So worst comes to worst, we could probably clean them through there. I think. There's one right there. Right there. Kind of see in there. Oh, there's one right there. So what you can do, take a long screwdriver. See how that opens up like that? It's kind of hard to see. Oh yeah, those are really dirty. You can see the black on the top of the, the points right there. See how it's all dirty like that? We're gonna take some sandpaper, just lightly get that off of there. And then there should be another one up down over here. There's another one. Let's see if that one's dirty. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're pretty dirty. All right, so how this puller works right here is you've got three holes. The bolts screw into those holes that go into the flywheel. And you've got this mass, I guess, like the master um, bolt. And this is gonna twist in and push against the crank shaft here. And we're hoping we can twist it off if it's not all bent. We'll see here. I believe this is 22 millimeter. Felt like the flywheel came off. It was coming. I think it's coming off. I don't think this thing is lined up perfectly straight with it. Oh yeah, it is. We'll keep going with it. What the heck? Loosen these. Oh, it's coming. You can see it's loose. It's getting hit by something. Huh. What is that binding on? Alright, we finally got the flywheel off of here. I think it was getting stuck on the woodruff key. I'll just clean these up a little bit. See what we're dealing with here. Doesn't look to be in bad shape. So that looks fine. In there. Now we can get to the points. You can see them in there. So there's one point right here and one right there. So we'll just kind of inspect those and see how bad those are. I know um, 
It was kind of hard to tell before. Let's see here. Uh, not like horrible, but they do have some crud on them. So we'll clean those up with some sandpaper. But everything else looks pretty good. Not seeing any broken wires or anything like that on here. You guys see anything broken? No broken wires anywhere. So the red one right here. And the, what is the orange one? That one leads up to, I'm not sure where that one goes to. Oh, right there. So it goes up to that one. So we could have bad condensers as well. The condensers are right here. Right there and right there. But I'm thinking it was the points. All right, so we ran into a bit of a problem. Um, look at this. See that outer ring? That's supposed to be connected to the flywheel. So when I went to reinstall the flywheel after cleaning the points, you can see it was off of it, and obviously it won't go back on. So in order to get that off, you've got to take this whole cover off. And in order to get the cover off, you've got to take this panel off, and then all these bolts are connected on the inside to connect that on, and they're all like rusted on. So we're going to get this panel off first and see if there's any bolts on the inside of there holding that on. But you can see all these are rusted out. And I've been taking the vice grips and trying to go around and loose them, but they're they're hard to get. So we will start with the cover. There's a mouse nest under there anyway, so we need to clean that out. But yeah, what a pain in the butt. We gotta get these two screws off first. Use the vice grips probably. And a flathead to get this started. If we can even grab onto these guys. Kinda flush with this thing. It's gonna be tough. Might try to hammer them free here. Stuck as the other ones on the side. They feel like they are though. Yeah. Let's try to hammer it. That one broke free. I don't know if I broke off the screw. Just broke free. Woohoo! So these are the last two, I believe, to get this cover off. All right, I think we got everything free off this cover. Let's see here. Yep. Ooh. Look at that mouse nest. Holy cow. Look at that. Eee. So we're gonna try vacuum that out. I'm gonna put the plugs back in so we don't get anything down the cylinders, but yeah, that's rough. That's really bad in there. All right, I think I got all the bolts off. Let's try to knock this cover off of here. Oh yeah, it's coming. All right, we had the corner bolt holding it on. It should come off now. Woohoo! But that was to get off. Now we can see in here this is a piece that came off the flywheel. Not sure what that's for. Doesn't look like it does much. Oh, that was for electric start. So there's an option to put a starter right here. That's why um, on the ignition there was a start. So there was an option right here. Had a plate over it for electric start, and this is what connects to the electric start. So we don't even need that, which is a good thing. <laughs> because I don't know if we could pound that back on. 
we could see, but I don't think I don't think we could. Oh, I see how this was on. So there's pins holding it on in place. And those pins fell out. So just have to make sure there's no pins in there. <laughs> Everything looks good. Now we can really check out the uh, the points here. Make sure those are clean. So right here is one of them. Oh yeah, those are nice and clean. So points are all good. Let's get this flywheel back on, if we can. So flywheel is all cleared out, no pins in the flywheel. A little easier to get the flywheel back on now. Oh, that's so much better. Nice. So, just to make sure that the pin is lined up, yep. So we're good there. We've got the flywheel back on. And before we put it all back together, I think we're gonna check for spark. All right, I rotated the engine over with a drill and we're still not getting anything out of this thing. So, um, at least no spark. So I'm thinking we're gonna check the coils next. We've gotta get these off of here. There's two bolts holding it on. I wonder if it's like a ground issue or something. All right, let's see here. Is this just the coil cover? I think these should come off. Oh, there we go, it's coming. It's just good to check it. We'll get the carb off. It'll make it easier to get that off. All right, so the ground wires are right here. I need to go to the frame right there. Just gonna clean these off. Make sure those are nice and shiny and good. There's two of them going to the frame. They're pretty dirty. Where's the other one here? There it is. So clean those off and we'll try this again. All right, so we've got the left side sparking now. Let's see if you guys can see it or not. I just pretty much rotate it by hand and it, it'll spark. There it was. Yeah, that one's sparking really good. Left side's sparking, right side's not. So we gotta figure that out. Quick swap the plugs. Maybe it's a plug problem. Let's see if this one sparks. Nope. Alright. So we gotta figure out why the right side's not sparking. We got spark on the left. All right, we took the boot off, because I think that might be the problem. Let's see if we've got spark from the actual wire here. Oh yeah. Yeah, so we've got spark 
from the wire. It's the boot. So, something with this boot. I wonder if we've got another boot we can use. All right, check this out. Oh yeah, we've got good spark now. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Hopefully you could. And then this one over here is sparking as well. Let's see if you guys can see that one. So both are sparking pretty good. That is fixed. We now have spark. Oh God, that took forever to get spark. All right, we cleaned up this belt a little bit. Get this back underneath there. That's good. And then we'll get the other piece in there. All right, we got this all together. You can see now everything's spinning the way it should. It's looking good. All right, now we gotta get the recoil on. All right, it's almost getting dark. So we started this thing in the morning and it's almost dark. So that means we've worked on it probably already like seven hours. So fun, fun. But at least we've got it back together and this is a glorious sight to see when you have spark on both spark plugs. Oh yeah. That is awesome. So, I guess what we're gonna do is probably work on the fuel system. See if anything's pumping through those lines. I'm guessing no, because they're super, super crunchy. <laughs> All right, so figure out the gas line. So this one going into the carburetor goes down here. Comes down here, up through the tank, and it's just hanging like halfway down in the t into the tank, so it must pull gas up, down, and to the carburetor. This line right here is the other line that goes right here, all the way down here, and it just must pressurize the gas tank, is what I'm thinking. So that pushes gas out through here, which we don't have the gas cap, so I don't know if we can pressurize the gas tank. Um, plus it's all really, really rusty in there. So we're probably gonna have to take the gas tank off and use something else. Um, but we might be able to just gravity feed this in. I don't know if that's gonna be enough pressure, but if we can gravity feed above the carburetor, it should just gravity feed into the bottom of it. And it should suck up gas, I would think. I don't know if that's gonna work or not. But um, yeah, we're gonna try that. And I guess we'll go from there. Hopefully this thing has enough compression to start. We might have to pour a little gas down the carburetor to get it going. But uh, we'll try. <laughs> Let's set up this gravity feed system. Might just zip tie that to there. So it can't go anywhere. And then we'll just dump gas down there. I think that's the best way to do it. Dump some premix down there. And hopefully that's gonna be enough to, oh crap. That filter just broke off. All right, so this is like a custom filter. The little nozzle thing just broke off right there. So that's no good. Um, and the other carburetor didn't have one. So, I don't know how we're supposed to get gas in there now. Oh, that really sucks. Hmm. Dang. I don't know. That is a big bummer. We might just be able to test it and just see if it cranks over with gas down the carburetor first. I might have to order one of these up. But let's see if it pops over. All right, let's get these spark plugs back in. Hopefully we have enough compression to start. Just gonna 
pour a little gas down here. Help it out for the first start here. See if she pops over here. Oh, yeah. I think she's gonna start here. That was really, really close. Let's get some gas going directly down the carb. All right, we don't wanna cause a fire, so. See if I can dump this down there. Hmm, we might have squirt it in there. Alright, we've got gas on the car, let's see. She fired up. That is awesome. Sound pretty decent. I don't hear any rattling or anything going on. Wow. I cannot believe she runs after 30 years. That's something. Let's see here. Get a little more gas down there. Let's see here. Oh yeah, that is awesome. We are going to now quick check compression, just see what they're at. Um, but yeah, she runs. Runs really good. All right, so that sounded really, really good. I'm really surprised at how um, good
good the engine sounds, considering it was locked up and sitting for 30 years. But let's just do a quick compression test on this. I just want to see where we're at for compression. All right, we'll do the right side first here. See what we've got. All right, we'll put it down here. Let's see, where can we put this? All right, you guys take a look at that. When you throttle open. Oh, it just moved. Throttle open, let's see what we get. Read. Oh, nice. Almost 150. Well, the right side's doing pretty good. Time to check out the left side. See what we get for this side. Come on, that would be so awesome. If it was like 150. Over 120, we're hoping for. All right, throttle open, here we go. Oh, more than 150. That is awesome. We've got great compression on this thing. All right, so it looks like compression checks out, 150 uh, each cylinder. So once this thing is riding, um, it should go, it should go pretty good. It's a 340cc, so it should move pretty good. Next video, we are going to clean up the gas tank, get the lines cleaned out, get that part for the carburetor. Because you can't just go to the store and buy one. It's like a special twist on filter. And unfortunately, the other carburetor he must have taken this one off and used it for that one as well. But um, yeah, once we get those things, I think this thing's gonna be rideable. Oh, and then a gas cap as well. Because I believe the gas tank needs to be pressurized for the gas to flow through the lines. So gas cap, gas lines cleaned, gas tank cleaned, and that filter for the carb, I think we're gonna be set. But yeah. I did not think we were gonna get this thing running today. It took a lot of patience and a lot of work, but we finally got it to go. So really, really happy about that. I thought for sure it wouldn't go once we found out it was locked up um, because when I first bought it, I didn't even pull it over to see. I should have pulled it over, but I trusted the guy. He said it wasn't locked up, but uh, we I think we won on this one after about seven hours of work. <laughs> But yeah, next video we will take this thing for the first ride. You guys will see it ride for the first time in 30 years. Stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video. And until next time.